Monday, I started the week by going to the school board meeting. There was a lot going on. They talked about the fact that our teachers in Indiana are paid near the bottom of, of everybody in the, uh, the country. Um, just shameful. I was there to support them. There were 150 or so people there. Um, I think we have to realize that TIF, you know, has ripple effects. I, I believe I'm correct in that this is the first TIF issue that has come before this council that was seated in 2015. Um, and, um, you know, it's a very serious consideration because it affects so many different things. If, if there's an opportunity cost with it, there are studies that say that really TIF spending doesn't really promote any further economic advantage than letting the free market dictate um, uh, the process. Um, I know that I, I've heard some people say that this is going to fall out on party lines. Well, I would remind everybody that we have independents and Republicans and Democrats here. And really, there's no Republican way to do a thing or a Democrat thing or an independent way. There's just the right way to do things. Uh, in order for me to vote and commit $2.6 million more like four million after the bonds are paid off over time. Um, I would have to have at least three different things take place that have not taken place to date. Number one, there needs to be meaningful community and neighborhood input. The meeting in March did not qualify as such. Folks were shut down before they had an opportunity to speak. There were some cards that were taken up with written comments. I don't know what went on with those. I personally, that evening, um, uh, I've had one of the current tenants come up to me and tell me that they thought that the building was up for sale. I spoke to two highly placed administration officials who would have had knowledge as to whether or not New Albany was pursuing purchase. I was told that we were not in the running and had no plans to do that, but here we are tonight, you know, two to three short weeks later. Um, so we need to have meaningful, legitimate input. Uh, you know, I, I look at Ms. Kokos because She's been one of the leaders of this, but you know, she had a more creative vision than I think that has been put forward thus far. And I don't know if everybody in this chamber has, has taken the time to look at that. We certainly didn't get to see that back in March. So you're having a meeting on the 24th and I applaud your efforts on that. Second, there needs to be a pathway for meaningful and ongoing council oversight of this project. Um, we are being asked to commit my mind, almost $4 million, again, after bonds are paid and community money, taxpayer money. And I know there's a line that says, whereas the council will not have any other responsibility with regards to financial expenditures, I mean, that's, that doesn't ring true to me. We have an ongoing financial responsibility. If this thing falters, that's on us. I mean, I think it's totally irresponsible for us to uh, commit that type of resource without having more information than we have at hand tonight. Which brings me to number three, the most important thing I need to know about this is what am I voting for? Uh, I don't know if there are gonna be 30 dwellings there. I don't know if there are gonna be 300 dwellings there. I don't know what type of commercial enterprises are gonna be there. And again, I think that that colonial manor is, is a key. It's a linchpin to that area, but I like what I've heard previously. Uh, I would like to see a corridor study that incorporates colonial mm -hmm. manor as part the key part for that area prior to us committing that sort of resource. So I want to reiterate, there's no one here that doesn't want to see that area prosper again. There's no one in town more deserving of having a turnaround in that area. Um, but as was reiterated earlier, two key points that were made. One, that area is already resident dense. We really don't need more residential property within there. The second thing I like is the, is the term that I think Mr. Turner used, pump the brakes and slow down a little bit. This is not a crisis. Uh, John Gondor, who I think sat in one of these seats long ago, I think as long ago as eight to 10 years ago, by the time he made the up on that, pointed to this as an area that should be targeted for restoration. And it is. But, but it's not a crisis. If it was $4.7 million a year to it's $2.6 million now, it sounds to me like we're trending down to a price where we might be able to get this for appraised value. And you know what? If another buyer swoops in, hallelujah. They're taking this off our hands. 
So I say let the free market work here and let the people that live in that area have some input with regards to some really good creative ideas that we have not considered yet. Thank you.